relative talents of Courtney Cronin, David Dennis Jr. The Monday after the Super Bowl is like your Super Bowl. How KC did it, what it means for Mahomes, why Hurts will reload, who Travis Kelsey is talking Man, about down in Kansas City. The Eagles are going to take it home this year. Uh, Not a but one. first and foremost, can you make that call? Let's go around the horn. Hard maybe, Tony. Hard maybe. Tim Cowell's show, you've covered about a third of the Super Bowls ever. Is that the latest? More than that. Most controversial flag in Super Bowl history? It might be. It might be. Pretty, pretty I pulled light. the jersey, you know, the card holder. I was hoping they would let it rock, you know, but it was holding. I, I know it always appears to be that you know, it's one call that makes it, it's not, it's not what it is, right? It, it's not what it is. There's, there's, there's so many plays that contribute to the, the end result of the game. And, and, and today they were better than we were. James Bradbury admits it. Nick Sirianni, very classy response there. KC fans approve of the call. But once that was flagged, kneel, 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 field goal, squib kick, Uncle Rico throw, Super Bowl 57 decided Kansas City wins. So David Dennis Jr. start us off with that call. Are you making that holding call? Well, first of all, shout out to Bradbury for big sportsmanship, passing on energy for admitting that it was a hold. That's for the hold <laughs> itself. I guess, yes, you. it is a hold. Yes, you have to make the call because that's what it was. It could have, you know, determined a touchdown or not. But as a fan, as somebody watching that game, I wish they didn't make the call. Like, we looked like we were heading towards Bills, Chiefs, part two, because nobody was stopping either of those quarterbacks. We were heading towards the all-timer, and instead we got the plays that you talked about. Kneels, kneels, and a field goal. Is something that seemed pretty ap academic way to end the game that was looking like it was heading towards the Well, you make classic. that call. Courtney Cronin, same question to you. Are you making that call? It's a ticky-tack call, and it's a judgment call. And I know people are going to say, well, would they have made that same call in the first quarter considering they made it in the fourth quarter? Well, this wasn't the textbook example we see typically of a defender when he manipulates okay. the direction of a receiver by spinning him around. And I know what James Bradbury said. I can appreciate him owning up to this. Juju Smith-Schuster, though, on the other hand, not so much. The, oh, yes, 100% after not selling that to the official in the moment. Typically, you can tell how much a receiver is held by how much they flail their arms and complain to an official in the moment. He didn't do any of that. He turned around and started running back towards the offense. He did not know he was held in that but moment. But he didn't. Philadelphia defenders also didn't demonstrably make a, any move on the field to suggest they were upset with the call. Tim Kalashaw, you heard what... Bradbury said, is that enough to move on from this? Uh, that's not enough. I, I, I'm not making that call from the simple fact that if you don't make it uh, and the game goes a different direction, is anybody showing that play today and say, did you see that hold they missed? That looks like basically every route a receiver runs. There's hand checking on every play. I, I just – and the thing I really hate on that call, uh, since it's not interference, is the automatic first down. You, you, just, give, you just give the game away – with that, and, and that's something I think people should look at and the committee should look at. They're, they just The penalties on the defense are too punitive. Uh, I'm not saying it's why the Eagles lost. I agree with Sirianni. They got outcoached and they got outplayed. But that, that's an awful call to make at that, at that point and in the George game. George Sedano, are you making that call? Tony, I am making that call, and you know who was demonstrative? Patrick Mahomes immediately pointed at the receiver in the area and told the official that was a hold in that scenario. And here's the thing. I just want consistency from the officials. If you're going to make that call in week four, then I want you to do it in the Super Bowl. And I understand that there are people who were upset because it, you know, for confirmation bias reasons, obviously, if you're Philly or Kansas City, uh, particularly if you're Philly, but also the audience. I get it, too. You want a game not being decided by, by the officials. But by the letter of the law, that's the call. And Tim Hasselback, I thought, did a great job on SVP Sports Center last night when he was saying, man, like, look, he grabbed him as he was coming out of his break. You can't do that. That changes the entire route in that scenario. Okay. So, you know, I, I think that he made a great point with Order that, particularly considering he played the game. 
Last week, Roger Goodell said that the officiating in the NFL has never been better. And aside from this defensive holding call, we had the Devontae Smith catch that was overturned. Nick Bolton probably wins Super Bowl MVP if that scoop and score because of the uh, Miles Sanders catch, if that was actually ruled a catch, he would have ended up returning that for a touchdown. The lack of consistency with officiating is But is that real, though? I mean, those calls were all 50-50, so that doesn't mean – they were bad calls because they went one way or the other. There, there are going to be 50-50 calls, right? Kalashaw, last word. Well, I mean, I think that I think this is a 50-50 call too, but the one I was going to point out is the one they said Goddard had controlled the ball when he's got it on his helmet and in, having his feet as he goes out of bounds. I can see why Chiefs fans You're never going to have a game without replay. close calls. That's, that's what we can say on that. When you have a player right. admitting it after the game, I think that was something we weren't all expecting. Maybe a change the way you all saw it afterwards. Done deal hey, at that point, that. Tony. Done the game deal. and the flow of this game and how Philadelphia seemed to be in complete control until they weren't at halftime. It's 10 points. Mahomes is limping. And then the second half, the double-digit halftime score comeback. It's the second one in Super Bowl history. The other was Falcons-Patriots. A clear choke job. This was not that. So, Courtney, big picture now. How did this happen? How did Kansas City beat Philadelphia? Mahomes is better on one leg than most quarterbacks are on two, as, ver as evidenced by what happened in the second half. Whatever magic he worked in the locker room, and credit to the training staff to get that ankle that he re-injured in the end of the second quarter, somehow able to play that was remarkable but going into this game the story was oh how good this Eagles pass rush is Mahomes the offensive line of the Kansas City Chiefs Andy Reid Eric Bieniemy, they mitigated that and did it in a big way the third lowest pass rush win rate for the Philadelphia Eagles in this game and you got to give Andy Reid a lot of credit here the pre-snap motion this team uses it the fourth highest of any team in the NFL they use that to their advantage coming out of halftime to be able to win this game mm -hmm. those two touchdowns we saw in the second half Tony's of course uh, being the prominent one Tim Kalashaw yeah I mean th that's what I wanted to hit on I mean I think the, the Chiefs spent two weeks dismantling the Eagles defense and those motion calls where they figured out that guy's not going to get back uh, when they when they pass off the the motion man th those we marvel at the throws Mahomes makes like he had against Cincinnati these great throws in traffic those were the two most wide open touchdowns he's probably had this year. And it was all because the Chiefs outscouted and outsmarted uh, the Eagles so defense. So you're speaking of the Sky Moore touchdown and the Tony touchdown. And yeah. a schematic advantage then is what tipped this game in the second half for Kansas City. Clearly. George Sedano, you agree with that? Was it something Philly did or didn't do? I, 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 no, I, I do. I do think there's one thing Philly I, I would have liked to have seen more of, but I'll get to that in a second. I do think Andy Reid and Eric Bieniemy and Patrick Mahomes were just in their bag, Tony. I mean, we talked already about the eye ca candy. Courtney and, and Tim did that. But here's the other part of the equation. Patrick Mahomes, the evolution of Patrick Mahomes allows Eric Bieniemy and Andy Reid to call the game they're calling. Remember, this is a guy a couple years ago in his first, you know, before his first Super Bowl was talking about how he was still – figuring out how to process reading defenses. Now, he's not only in gr great in, in an improvisational situation, he was one of the best quarterbacks, if not the best quarterback in the pocket this year. He was putting the ball in different locations, deep, intermediate, short. He was nailing everyone. So I think all of that plays into this. And as far as Philly is concerned, I don't want to completely absolve them, but I was stunned that Miles Sanders, who rushed for 1,269 yards this season, didn't get very many touches in this game. I found that to be quite surprising. David Dennis Jr. Quite simply, the Chiefs played a perfect half of football. No penalties, no turnovers, no punts, no sacks, one incomplete pass, and that incomplete pass was basically a throwaway. After Patrick Mahomes hurt his ankle, he was 13 for 14, 92 yards, two touchdowns. 93.8% of their first downs led to more first downs and a touchdown, except for that slide at the end. They basically dismantled this Eagles defense by playing perfect football. What, are the, what were the Eagles' big mistakes? There was Jalen Hurts, one fumble. There was a bad punt. That was it for pretty much the whole game. This was all about was what the Chiefs were able to do in the second of the football. If you had the football, th good things are happening to you on offense. Anybody question Philadelphia punting? It was deep in their territory, but a punt in the second half Tim Kalashaw when you're moving I mean, on every third down every fourth down you're moving the chains I just feel like it's your own 32 or 33 yard line that fourth and two fourth and three that's a lot to try to get I, I realize 
they, mm. it ended up costing them on the punt return, but you can't look at it that way. I mean, they had to trust their defense to, at some point, make a stop, and it never happened. Number one defense in the NFL this year by a lot of measures. Yeah. One more thing on Patrick Mahomes. He said he didn't get a shot for his ankle. There was a moment where Toradol was trending on Twitter. Um, so take it for what you will. The second half heater he went on. Three touchdowns, the game-winning field goal, the run to set up that. He didn't wince until he was done with the run. And his career run now. Two championships in five years. The greatest of all time talk. I I'm sure Travis Kelsey doesn't think you guys believe in Mahomes enough. But Tim, what did Mahomes just do? Nobody's giving the Chiefs a chance next year, Tony. <laughs> uh, Mahomes, it's not just the two rings at, at 27. Yeah. He's already played in five AFC championship games, all five at home, which means every year he has led his team to a great record that earns that spot and gets them close to the Super Bowl. Uh, you know, he, he is he – is, anything is possible. I don't, I don't know if he can get to seven like Brady. He'll have to play into his – his 40s, but he's going to play in a lot more Super Bowls. Mm, look at you doubting him, of... giving Kelsey fire. Look at, yeah, you know, anything's possible, but who knows? Sedano, how about you? <laughs> Tony, if his next five years yeah. are as good as his first five years, he may end up being number one, okay? And, and it may not need to be that he has the most championships because Bill Russell has more championship than, the championships than Michael Jordan, and we talk about Michael Jordan as the GOAT. I think Patrick Mahomes could be the greatest player we've ever seen at that position. He's Dan Marino and Steve Young having a baby with his accuracy and running ability and his ability to throw at different angles and getting the ball out as quickly as he does. He's, he's right now to me, it's Tom Brady, it's Joe Montana, it's Patrick Mahomes. And then I've got Dan Marino in there as well with Peyton Manning. But he's already in the middle of that top five. Two championships and three Super Bowls in total. Precisely what Manning did in his career. That's where Mahomes is after five seasons, David Dennis Jr. What does it mean? It means that if Patrick Mahomes doesn't make another deep playoff run or another Super Bowl win and just accumulates yards, he's going to be top five. He's locked in at that top five position. And even beyond football, you're going to be hard-pressed to find any athlete in any sport who had a better first five years in their career. You could say Tiger Woods, but that's a single, that's an individual mm -hmm. sport. We're talking team sports. It's hard to find somebody who had a better first five years hey, in their Cordy entire Crow. career. Peyton Manning said last week that if Patrick Mahomes were to retire right now, he'd go right to the Hall of Fame. And I think you will agree with that, right? I can't disagree yeah. with yeah, that. Yeah. And, yeah. you know, w the conversation right now has nothing to do with Tom Brady versus Patrick Mahomes. It's Mahomes starting to escalate over some of those really good quarterbacks that we saw in the 2000s and 2010s. Mm -hmm. Travis Kelsey, who is he talking about? He's talking about you, Courtney Cronin. He's talking about you, Tim Callis. So you were the ones who had the Eagles. I mean, it was a tight game. You're not getting docked as much as Sedano did for the national championship. But George, David, you nailed it. Rip the rewards. Buy or sell on the other side. While Kansas City moves forward in dynasty mode, the Eagles so close. And now one of the harder things to do in the sport, getting back to the Super Bowl. Bit more on Jalen Hurts, one of the greatest games in Super Bowl history, perfect except the fumble. He was asked a terrific question, maybe the best question from a media member all week, and this is how he answered. What is one lesson that you learned from this game that you'll take on to the next? Obviously, we had a, a big time goal in the end that we wanted to accomplish, and we came up short. You know, and I think the beautiful part about it is everyone experiences different pains, everyone di experiences different. Um, agonies of life, but you decide if you want to learn from it. You decide if you want to use that to be a teachable moment, and I, I know what I'll do. Hmm. Hurts with 15-year-old Giovanni Agarin, Gio the podcaster. George, on Hurts and the game he had, and whether he can get back to this stage. Tony, he was incredible. Obviously, you look at the numbers, four touchdowns, previous quarterbacks 39-0 and 0 in that situation. Mm -hmm. And he's gotten better. You've seen the deep ball touch. You've seen the touch overall. But particularly on the deep ball with those two weapons on the outside, he is putting on the money, something he couldn't do the previous year. And ultimately, I do think he gets back. That could live in infamy because Dan Marino never got back. But I think he's so young and continue, can continue to grow. Tim Kalisha? You know, I'm hesitant to say he can get back easier easier than Mahomes because Travis Kelsey will hear that and, and we'll all hear about it. But the AFC is much more crowded with young quarterbacks and good young teams. 
And if I have a team that loses the Super Bowl, I want Jalen Hurts as my quarterback to bring me back. He's probably in the weight room doing the squats today. Gordy Cronin. Had it not been for that unforced fumble, he's probably on his way to one of the best Super Bowl MVP performances of all time. But in the short term, he heads right to the negotiating table for his extension. We know that they're going to sign him to a long-term deal. He very well could be the highest-paid quarterback. Can he get back to this stage? Yes, but the roster's going to look very different. They've got James Bradbury, Javon Hargrave headed towards unrestricted free agency. Some potential changes along the defensive line, too, with some pending retirements, maybe Brandon Graham and Fletcher Cox. Mm -hmm. David Dennis Jr. on Hurts and getting back here with the Eagles. The Eagles are 16-2 and two when Jalen Hurts starts. Their division's going to be a little bit worse. I think that they can make it back to that Super Bowl. But in terms of Hurts' performance, we just got through talking about Patrick Mahomes as a top five quarterback of all time. And Jalen Hurts was neck and neck with him during that game, minus one fumble. 300 yards, 50 rushing uh, yards, and three rushing touchdowns. Never happened before. It's the second time he's I done. brought it up before, but there was the fourth down and two and change. They're unstoppable <laughs> on fourth down with Hurts and the QB sneak. Yeah. Pushing from behind on the QB sneak. Tim, I know you said something before we sat down. You could see the competition committee looking at this, this offseason, the QB sneak. Yeah, I mean, I'm sure there's going to be a lot of teams complaining about it. And uh, You don't but, think it should know, be they legal? They just do it better. The push from behind should be well, illegal? Look, a lot of what they do is just their offensive line getting that push. Now, the, the, the players are there to push Hurts, but having the strongest quarterback in the league helps. I want to talk about the field from last night, all right? From Joe Pompliano, the reporter. The NFL spent two years preparing the grass, grown at a local sod farm in Phoenix, installed it two weeks before the game. It was sitting in 40-inch deep trays, and they rolled it out each morning the two weeks before for daily sunshine. Now, the question is, how many players slipped last night? Two dozen? Three dozen? Guys slipping in celebrations. Here's what the grass is via Josh Weinfuss. Newer breed of grass called Tahoma 31, a hybrid mix of two types of Bermuda grasses and rye grasses. It was first created in 2006, tested and studied until 2018. Tim, did last night's field negatively affect the game? Yeah, and, and it affected it for both teams, but just players sliding all over the place when they tested the field. Did they test it with all that paint on it? Because that's mostly where they were sliding, but Arizona's had problems with their so called natural grass. Kyler Murray's injury and all the rest, they've never had very good grass. 40 there. Corona. Nick Bolton, the Chiefs linebacker, said that the turf the Chiefs played on in Arizona earlier this season was actually worse than what you saw in the Super Bowl. And I can't imagine anything worse because after the halftime show, did you see how many people were out there to fill all those divots in on the field? That looks like me when I'm playing golf. So, yes, the grass absolutely became the storyline that it shouldn't. It's unfortunate that the NFL had two years to figure this one out and couldn't get it There's right. There's an ongoing debate, grass versus turf in the NFL. This is grass, even though it was created in the last two year, uh, two decades, I should say. This hybrid, David Dennis Jr., did affect the game? Yeah, it was embarrassing to watch. This is the Super Bowl. It's the biggest game of the year, and players are sliding around. I actually think it impacted that last punt. Uh, it looked like he was trying to steady his feet, and that's why we got a line drive punt and the lo longest return in Super Bowl history. So I think it was a pivotal part of that game beyond people just slipping and sliding around the field. George, sit down. Tony, I'm not a horticulturist or an agronomist, but anyone with eyes could see that that affected the game in a number of ways. They were lucky that it didn't affect any other big plays because it affected enough to, to David's point, the punt. Uh, we saw a couple of kickoffs, certain situations that should never happen in the biggest game in our sport where most people are watching, or a third of the country is watching that particular game. I didn't know we were still creating new types of grass. This is news to me. But, yeah. Everyone. Tim Callis, recording Cronin, thank you for your time. David Dennis Jr., George Sedano, showdown, next. Have time with special guests. The baby bump sets the bar impossibly high for announcements in the future. A medley of 12 songs, that has to be a record. George grade Rihanna's halftime. A plus, Tony, visually incredible to watch. The fact she did it while she was pregnant, she has one baby now, is expecting a second, was wild. And by the way, if you haven't seen this on the internet, she had an ASL interpreter, Justina Miles. You got to see her interpretation of Rihanna on the internet. Fantastic. A plus for her, too. Michael Jackson, Beyonce, Prince, Rihanna, 
throw her on the Mount Rushmore for the, for all those hits with Fetus. And I want to say one thing to all those dweebs out there who are criticizing Rihanna and say she didn't move enough. You try moving while having been pregnant with your second baby in a year and tell me how difficult it is to dance with the Super Bowl, let alone tying your That's dog on That's the way shoes. to make an announcement. I mean, a human reveal. I mean, this is two babies in 12 months. She's doing the Super Bowl. What? That's what they call that? They call that ASAP twins, right? When you have two in a year. When you, David Dennis Jr., take the FaceTime. You know, there was a lot of talk about Super Bowl commercials, but and a lot of them are great. But the one, the thing that got on my nerves the most is QR codes. Why do they exist? What kind of loser is going to walk up to the TV and take a picture of a QR code and try to click on it and get whatever bonus or whatever? Get rid of QR codes on TV and restaurants. Give me a menu. I don't want or need a QR code. Just have something in writing for me, please. All right, so that's what, that's a hard take we had today. Yeah. It's QR codes. I'm against grass that comes from different parts of the world. When you when you're okay, good. Any other commercials? The the Tubi commercial that made it seem like you turned off the game in the middle of it. Any of you fall for it? No. You know, Premature ben electrification. Affleck. Yeah, commercials. Ben Affleck with Dunkin' Donuts. Uh, commercials aren't what they used to be. I don't think. Uh, the Jesus commercials. I get. The, I don't need to pay for that. I get it for free when I go to church on Sunday morning, right? <laughs> Uh, not going to touch that. We're at a 23 and a hour break.